I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Dan, Daniel Hennessy, a local activist from Brisbane in Australia. How are you Dan? Thank you. That's good. And tell me about your journey to veganism. Um, I think when I first started um, I was a little bit aware about animal testing. Um, I find it's, and I find now it's a great sort of cause to gateway issue to get talking about other things and sort of spread the seed a little bit but um, I did construction work at a slaughterhouse for six months um, and I saw some pretty brutal things that um, are definitely hidden from the public and um, it was yeah, a very horrific place to see. I was offered to see it from start to finish from mm -hmm. The holding pens, which are out for you know four to five days, sort of starve of water and and food in the sun, to pretty much the finished product when it ends up in in a, in packaging. What animals was it? Uh, it was cows. Yeah. yeah, it was only cows at this place. Um, and yeah, just saw some horrible horrible things from them. Mm -hmm. Even just little things from them, just seeing them crying to to be you know really really afraid of people because they sort of they could sense it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's in no way humane, like it is uh, claimed to be. Um, I saw several pretty um, horrific events, mm. and I guess so sort of that that plan to see um, long term. It did take two or three months at least till I started actually making the connection and getting a bit of compassion. Mm. Um, and then pretty much towards the end, I went vegetarian. I did have a bit of a relapse, but what really confirmed my belief is, um, obviously I've got a lot of animals <laughs> here, um, I was on the way to work one morning and I found a cat and it had obviously just been hit, it was still twitching, um, but maybe from the car tire, it had actually taken a bit of its fur off, um, mm. and I could see the meat under the cat and it was still moving and I could sort of, I saw it as a piece of meat. But at the same time, I saw the cat, and that's what made the connection. And I remember thinking that I may as well be eating my own animals if mm. going to eat meat, and that's something I wouldn't do. Um, so that just, I could never eat red meat after that again. Mm. And that's what sort of really confirmed it for me. And how long ago was that? Uh, that was probably about five years ago. So mm. I went vegetarian, I was vegetarian for quite some time, and started getting really into animal rights. Um, after all, sort of that had happened, and I decided that if I was going to be an animal activist, I needed to stop being hypocritical because I was still consuming dairy mm -hmm. um, and eggs occasionally. So I decided to go see a screen of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's the vegan maker, isn't it? The vegan maker. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I actually went to shock when I was watching it. I noticed mm -hmm. I started jolting and I just went very, very blank after crying for a while. And, mm -hmm got home just full of rage, anger and being the next day and I had to sort of learn how to I guess harness that anger. Um, I lost a few friends because I was too aggressive with that, with that anger but since I've learned to sort of harness the way I approach people about it. Um, and how, what are some tips for that? Um, to use the anger in a positive way or... Yeah I guess to, to realise it doesn't do much. Um, I think you sort of just have to remember that you were there once. I, I guess I get angry when a lot of people are more ignorant and don't want to learn about it, mm. but um, since not seeing some of those friends, a couple of people that I would never ever have thought to go vegetarian or vegan have, um, mm. and one of them is probably the most hypocritical about it, so I mean some people can get there, um, but I think the really aggressive in your face tactics doesn't doesn't work, but mm. just to be more factual, and I find, um, especially when, because I'm a construction worker and people see that I'm energetic all day, um, if I bring a really healthy lunch, they're sort mm. of very, they question me about it and they ask a lot about it, how good it looks, and um, I'm very surprised that that can keep me going so energetic all day, but yeah, I guess just try and, try and stay relax from getting through to people and don't let the ignorance get to you. Yeah, exactly. And you've got quite a few tattoos. Yes. Tell me about your tattoos. Uh, what they mean. Show, show them. This one is Choose Cruelty Free. Um, so that's what started your activism? Yeah, basically. Um, it's a group in Melbourne, um, choosecruelty free.org.au and um, 
they're doing great things for animal testing for cosmetics and um, they work with Humane Research Australia quite closely which is um, a group that, uh, the only group in Australia that form animal free tests. So I guess that was a bit of a, a tribute to them plus the fact that, like I said, I think it's a great sort of gateway issue to, to start off on. So when people ask what it is, I can always explain. Mm -hmm. I give a quality free brochure to every single one of my customers. Um, which you know is great. Most of them respond very well. Um, on, on talking about that, I've actually managed to take a couple of my customers to vegan restaurants. So oh, okay. yeah, like, um, I could definitely get 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 through to quite a few of them. Um, and obviously the vegan on the neck because I'm vegan and I got it somewhere where um, somewhere really subtle. Well. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's definitely started a lot of conversations I would have never had. Mm. Um, even when I've been on building sites with. Um, you know, guys driving cement trucks, you know, mm. big really hairy blokes that are actually really <laughs> interested in it. Mm. Um, who, you know, when I was, a, a, you know, um, before my pre-back injury or, you know, I'd be sprinting around with rows of cement and they were just really shocked that mm. I could do that and still be so, you know, healthy and fit. Um, and I've got the 269 on my arm, which is a part of the 269 movement. Mm -hmm. And what's um, that about? It's basically that, that number was a calf that was uh, rescued from uh, a, a dairy farm and it's basically imprinting that, that probably meaningless number that they gave him and just showing our solidarity with him I guess. Mm -hmm. cool. um, and there's many many more to come. <laughs> but, yes. Good, that sounds good. Yes. Have to keep, keep us um, informed about that. Yes, it's on the lowdown for now though. Yep. And so you're speaking about your job. What's what's the job that you have here in Brisbane? Uh, at the moment, I and will be have to do for the rest of my life. I design and build cat enclosures. Um, obviously, I've had about 15 years in the construction industry, but um, had had a little slight injury with my back, so I decided to do something lighter. And yeah, I sort of just creeped into this for a few reasons. Um, and what's a cat enclosure? Uh, it is basically. A fence that keeps a cat in, but it utilises a system of marine grade stainless steel fixings and wires and a polyethylene net that will cover mm -hmm. an entire area, whether it's inside your house, your backyard. And what it does is it keeps your cat from straying off your property. So it allows your cat to go indoors and outdoors, but to be safe at the same time from mm -hmm. uh, fighting and diseases. Um, feline AIDS is up to 26% in Queensland. Mm -hmm. which only takes one bite and they're incredibly destructive to the, the wildlife so it's really um, a, a few aspects um, in many councils around Queensland it's actually illegal to have your cat right off your property and a lot of customers have been fined five hundred dollars mm, which is so, a lot yeah mm. um, you know it's something in some cases you know half a third of an enclosure so um, yeah there's a few reasons why I do it but I really like it because I can do a bit of outreach and getting mm -hmm. people's ears so I mean they're obviously spending a lot of money on one or two animals so they've got that compassion there it just um, it just needs to to be put across to other animals mm -hmm. pretty much um, yep. and and how do you find people react to you like you said before You've taken a few of your clients out to restaurants. How do how do they feel? How do you get to like? Oh yeah, I'm Dan. I'm going to do this enclosure for you. Oh yeah, let's have lunch together. Um, how do you get from one? I to feel over the years I, I've um, I've become very um, from doing animal activism. I've, I've become very good with my words. I guess when I get fired up and passionate about it, I can really sort of manipulate the conversation and steer it into getting them to ask me what I want to ask rather than me pushing it on them. Yep. Um, but the vegan tattoo is a good start because mm -hmm. I'll ask why and I can tell them and I'll fish and feel around for yep. what they feel, think, may ask and I'll play on that a bit and I'll bait them in with questions and answers. Um, and I guess I think the, the big one for that uh, that sort of really wins them over is my energy levels. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do a really long day and non-stop fast-paced all day and um, yeah, I guess they're, they're sort of shocked that I'm so sort of fit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, basically I just drop, hop down, basically I just drop uh, a few hints the whole time mm -hmm. and give them the area and just tell them bits and pieces and facts and 
I mean, because I'm, sometimes I'm there from eight hours to anything up to three days, so I sort of plan that into how long I'm going to be is what I'm going to mm -hmm. say as well, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's a process. Yeah, I'm still working on it. And you do a lot of activism, especially within Brisbane and the Queensland communities. Um, Dan's got a Green Earth um, shirt on, and that's my not-for-profit environmental group in Brisbane. You also do stuff with Animal Liberation Queensland and various other groups. Yeah. And um, what, what are some of the things that you do, and how would you suggest other people get involved with um, activism? Well, I've been a bit quiet for last year. I'm about to get back on board, though. Um, but... There's a lot of little sneaky things you can do. I think um, just generally getting, just generally being an activist in, um, like in your everyday life. Um, too much. Hop down. If um, if you see something you don't think is right, or see something that you think you can get across to people, mm. um, don't bite your tongue. You know, mm. if someone tells you where to go, whether it be a shopping centre or anything, it doesn't matter. Um, it far outweighs. You know the fact that you could plant a decent seed, mm. um, but yeah, as far as with, with groups, there's always plenty of protests going on. Whether mm. it be um, letter writing like you guys do, or mm. doing outreach, or there's uh, a vegan group now that do um, vegan bake sales mm. for eating for the animals. That's good because it's sort of showing people you know you can even have your sort of nice junky chocolatey food mm. still. And um, so the food food way is a good point to get across, but um, yeah, I think just really speaking your mind is the best way to be an activist. Mm. Mm. And do you have a favourite thing you like to do? Uh, uh, there's a little means of advertising that I like to do. Mm. Um, I came across it a while ago, I had the idea that um, they started putting little A4 advertising in public toilets a while ago, um, which... Which may or may not have been done for Christmas. Yeah. Christmas or yeah, even just um, general sort of advertising for these bigger companies that you may be able to place your own advert mm. over. Um, I did one um, about a year and a half ago and I went constantly back for the better part of a year and it remained there. Um, Which is a long time. Yeah, 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 and it was basically a butcher holding a lamb and it said um, you pay, she dies, mm. and pretty much go vegan, and just sort of getting people to make that connection. Mm. Stay there for a very, very long time. Um, it's a very good place to do it. There's no one in there, you can do it straight up. Mm. It's very, very easy. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can make up your own stickers to maybe put on meat packaging mm. in supermarkets, or mm. animal, you know, animal testing stickers saying this product is tested on animals, mm. or um, yeah, there's definitely a little sneaky things you can do. I think um, t-shirts are a great thing to do. You know, you would be a walking, a walking advertisement. Mm. Um, so yeah, t-shirts, little things like that, and yeah, just little bits and pieces really. And um, you've just married your um, childhood sweetheart, yes. Georgina, and I, I was privileged to go to the vegan wedding. Can you tell people about the wedding? Um, my wife mainly organised it all, even though it was my idea, which was great. Um, but basically, she's very, very eco-friendly. Um, and obviously, we're vegan, so um, we weren't going to serve dairy or meat or eggs at our wedding. Mm -hmm. So, um, she made the theme uh, an eco-friendly vegan wedding. So, from the clothes being bamboo to, um, you know, plates, cutlery, everything, and the food being vegan. Um, we actually found a, a vegetarian catering company that did an all vegan feast for us. Mm -hmm. um, and even a lot of our friends that were very, very strong omnivores that, you know, barely touch fruit and veggies, we got comments, you know, like, be best meal I've ever had and mm -hmm. things like that. So, yeah, it was it was an amazing meal and it was a really nice wedding. We had it down at um, the beach at Stradbroke. Mm -hmm. An um, island in island, Queensland. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it rained all week and mm. cleared up the one day of the wedding and then rained again the next day, so yeah, it, was it was good. good it worked it? out yeah. well. It was a beautiful, beautiful, um, beautiful weather just when you needed it. Yes. Mm. 
and um, you can have a look on the Viva La Vegan um, website for the interview that I did on my blog with Dan and Georgie for, about their wedding and you can see all the lovely photos and yeah it was a really good day. Mm. And how, how would you suggest or what would you suggest to people who want to get involved with being a vegan or being an activist? What would you say is the, the first thing that they should do? Um, if you haven't seen anything before, Earthlings is um, a definite, very, very strong, powerful documentary um, that will definitely kickstart you on your way. But there's, especially in um, Brisbane now, there's a lot of vegan restaurants popping up. So mm. just go out and try the food and try and meet new people. Um, everyone's always very willing to help, sort of, you know, help you out with diet and lifestyle changes and things like that. There's vegan mentors out there, you know, the three day vegan challenge. So it's, I think it's very easy to get started in because everyone is so willing to help mm -hmm. um, and they're not going to charge you anything for it, you know, there's just that, that satisfaction of wanting to, to get other people to sort of realise how good the lifestyle is. Um, but yeah, I'd probably, you know, you can contact your animal rights groups and things like that and see what they're doing. There's a lot of vegan meetups where people just go and get vegan food and just go and meet like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And um, if if I asked you this ten years ago, do you think you would have had similar sort of answers? Or? No. Not at Why all. not? Um, <coughs> I was a very strong fisherman. I pretty much just ate meat. I never ate veggies, and you know I was sick pretty much every week. But I was just completely against it. I remember well, my sister's been vegetarian since she was about six, and mm -hmm. went vegan a few years later. And she so she's been um, on the path of 20 years or so, uh, and I remember always poking fun of like my, mm -hmm. my whole childhood. Um, you know, even into my adult years, I was always making fun of her. So poor Rebecca. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm now I'm on board with her. So mm -hmm. uh, it uh, definitely wouldn't have been the same answer. And um, and we've got all the some of your rescue friends all around us. Yes. What are their names? Um, it's getting very confusing. <laughs> this sure. is Hagrid and Cody. They're from a shelter. Mm -hmm. um, this little one is a bolter and she escaped from her uh, horrible, horrible family. Um, I managed to grab her just before she got hit by a car. Um, mm. Her hair was right down to the ground, even on her feet. You know, mm. her hair was right spread out. It was. She was covered in really thick dreadlocks. It took me four, a good four hours to cut them out and completely shave her. She had nests of fleas on her, no ID, she just smelled. Um, and she was just a very sort of shy, timid, scared dog. And after that three days, she just completely changed personalities. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they they pretty much won't get me back. I found out who, who had her, but um, the vet said the only way she could have gotten in that state is she would have been homeless for at least a month. So that's that's how neglected she was. Mm. And now she's a little daddy's girl. And you have some other have some other animals here as well. What other animals have you rescued? Um, we've got another two dogs downstairs. Um, we have six cats. Two of them were store bought many many years ago, which we don't support or believe in now. Um, one of our rescue cats had a pretty nice story. We actually found her on um, a main industrial road and she was just sort of dragging herself on the ground and um, when I just saw her, I pulled her and grabbed her and took her home and she couldn't stand, walk. She was just malnourished, literally just bone, um, couldn't sit. Uh, took her to the vet, they wanted to put her down and we, my missus within an hour had already become attached to her. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we pretty much, hand fed her and um, trying and got her muscles working over about two or three months at least. She had no um, bowel control or anything. Mm -hmm. And over about three months she completely came good and she's such an affectionate cat. Mm. Very, very affectionate. And some feathered friends as well? Yes, I uh, haven't had them for too long. I found uh, a chicken, it might be a rooster, hopefully not, um, in an industrial area. Um, I believe someone dumped her because they might have thought 
she was a he. Um, that would be from the egg hatching school program, I would say. Um, and it took me about an hour to catch her. And then I ended up getting another two rescue friends, her, and they picked and bullied on her for about two weeks. And then I got hold of a friend who uh, told me about some ducks that were in cold. So we got a wee safe six skateboarder friend and we've got two Australian miniature mm. ducks and four ducks now out in the backyard. So yeah, it's a full herd. Yes, yeah, so quite a few animals. Yes. <laughs> it's our pack. Yeah. <laughs> and they would keep you um, entertained at least, wouldn't they? Yes, all the time. entertained, sometimes annoyed, yeah. most of the time entertained, <laughs> um, but there's always some little funny battle going on or some weird play fighting. Or, Talking yeah. about um, getting annoyed, um, how, how um, have you changed over the years with um, your, you know, how you would relate to people in the past or to now? Um, I'm slowly getting better, it's taken a while, I've always been a hothead. Um, but, yeah, I think, sort of, I, I really used to care about myself, it's very selfish and I'm definitely a lot more hot-headed, um, but, yeah, I'm definitely sort of changing, I'm trying hard to become compassionate to humans mm -hmm. as well, um, it's just a bit hard sometimes with, with people being very ignorant and not wanting mm -hmm. to, to listen or see what's going on. And would you contribute the fact that that you, you're not drinking or smoking or doing any drugs or anything like that now to, to helping with that? Yeah, it's definitely a big part. Um, like 19 months ago I had no job, I literally had no possessions, I know it's because um, I split with my partner for a bit and when she moved out there, I had, there was nothing in the house, mm -hmm. so nothing. Um, everything I've ever been pawned to um, buy probably pot or smoke a lot of but you still a lot of other drugs and um, even a lot of my stuff I pawned for alcohol mm -hmm. um, my drinking problem was that bad um, but yeah I pretty much had, had, had nothing so I've completely turned just from not drinking I've, it's completely changed my lifestyle I've got you know my own business my own car now it's just literally changed so much it, going Going sober and straight just made me do a 180. Mm. Yeah, just gave life meaning to this. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yes. And meaning to all the animal friends as well. Definitely. Um, I think when I first quit, that's what helped me a lot. I got very into animal rights when I quit mm. and um, gave me a bit of a purpose. But I think you really, really need to fill your time in 100% if you do have a problem with it. You need to be completely focused on doing something 24 7 until pretty much the time you go to sleep something positive. so instead of thinking about alcohol or something you're thinking about something else is that what yeah you're gardening gardening and veggie gardening was um a, a, a great thing for me to do that's mm -hmm. what put a lot of my energy into it and plus you can see something for your assets so it's something positive coming mm -hmm. out of it and also probably setting up my business um even now it's established i'm up to 10 11 some nights but mm -hmm. um I got 100, just 100% 100 through myself into that, mm. you know, all my focus, all my energy, and I didn't have the energy or, or the time to think about drinking. Mm. Um, and that sort of held off thinking about it and the cravings, so um, they'll still always be there. I still pretty much battle it daily, think about it, gets emotional sometimes, mm. but yeah, I think you pretty much need a, a, um, a hobby, something to keep your mind free. Exercise definitely helps. I started running. Uh, when I quit and just sort of pumped all the toxins out of my body by doing that and um, yeah you just you need to want to do it mm. you can't say you're going to try and then and try and fight it if if you want it and you want it strong enough it will just happen but you have to convince yourself I think first you have to deprogram yourself to, mm. to um, teach yourself that you do want it and just be very controlling of the negative and positive thoughts mm. I think yeah, definitely. Help me get through. Mm -hmm. And how would you suggest if someone else wanted to do that? Just similar sort of thing? Find a hobby? Yeah, definitely. Um, just find a hobby, exercise. Um, I personally didn't go to AA, but I've heard it's very good. Mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah, just really, really occupy your life. Mm. But yeah, the biggest part I found a few months before it, um, I would really hate the fact that I was doing it. I wouldn't see a drink or a cigarette as a reward, but more of a negative. Yeah. Then I started to really dislike what I was doing, mm -hmm. um, which led obviously to me not wanting to do it. So I think it's about really, really deprogramming your thoughts and how you think about it too, mm -hmm. to sort of create that sort of want for you to want to do it. And um, how would you like to see the vegan movement in five years time? Uh, expanding. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's good now that things like even Meat Free Mondays and I think that has been brought into, into some schools and places like that. I think it's great that um, younger generations are more open to it now mm -hmm. and more, more learning about it now. The facts are becoming, um, things are becoming made aware of nutrition and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, there's um, an, uh, Animalia that mm -hmm. I do with Jody Ruckley and we go around and um, oh sorry and Renard Holpen and we go around and do school presentations. Mm -hmm. um, we only done one so far and it was um, about factory farming mm -hmm. for pigs and we all dressed up and we went through what pigs like to do and what they don't do and what's happening to them now and I think things like that in school are great because that's I think we need to sort of push the next generation to bring it through and maybe get to them before TV and society mm. and their That's parents the and mm. everyone has got to them. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see the young ones bringing it through, but I think, um, yeah, maybe just getting across, I think, to the young generation to, to help, help bring it through and expand it a bit and, you know, hopefully there'll be a lot more places to eat and mm. things to buy that are vegan and, mm. yeah. Sounds good. Yes. Well, thank you for your time, Dan. No if worries. anyone needs a cat enclosure in Queensland at yes. the moment, um, may you never know where it might go later. But check out Dan's website and um, yeah, thank you. See vivalavegan.net for more information. Excellent.